Good girl. Come on. Good girl. Come here. Come here. Sit. Sit. There you go. Lay really down. All right. Morning, guys. I just went on my snowshoe walk. I, uh, I load up some kind of rifle and I've got a trail out here uh, that goes around to some of my metal targets and uh, today I was packing the 45 Colt which we all know how much I love and uh, I shot about 10 or 15 rounds of the metal targets as I went around and I walked around there a couple times anyway so today and Teaspoon was with me and she's learning how to sit right by my side when I shoot and wait so she's doing good too okay so what we're gonna do is I got some sandpaper yesterday I'm gonna start sanding this wood and prepare it for stain so I got everything just about right now I'm waiting for some more supplies. Uh, these are going to have a black, blue, black finish on them. So it's time to start. I did yesterday. I did some also some polishing on the barrel. It's like 90% now. So uh, while the stains are drying, I'll be finishing metal and uh, putting a finish on it and this will probably take several coats of stain but we're still in some rough sanding uh, territory right now so um, I want to get I think I'm about at the 150 stage of sandpaper so I'm going to start sanding it down and shaping it a little bit most of the shaping is done uh, there are just a couple places where I'll actually take off a good bit of material, but most of it is going to be taking out scratches and scuffs and uh, and smoothing it and getting it ready for the finish. Then I'll go to a, a another sandpaper, about a 320 sandpaper, and uh, before I do that, I'll wet it with alcohol, and that'll raise all the little stickers out of the wood, and uh, then I'll buff it down again. And then I'll go to about a 400 uh, sandpaper, and uh, that's probably where it'll end, and then we'll put some finish on. So I'm going to get rolling here a little bit, sit down and have a cup of coffee. I'll let you know how we're going as we go. I should have had the camera rolling a minute ago. Old teaspoon got down here in between my legs. Of course, I stepped on one of her toes. She starts screeching. I try to get away from her. She runs where I'm going to get away from her. Step on her other toe. Anyway, it was kind of funny, but nobody fell down and nothing fell off the bench. So I've got this down to about 120, 150, and what I'm really interested in too, one thing, don't try to get all the scratches out without putting any stain on, because <laughs> I don't care how good you do this, that stain will show up more scratches. But the ones that you can see, and these ones here I can see and it's not been and I'm getting them uh, they they gotta go and you know finishing a gun depends on a couple of things one of course what the customer wants he's gonna say I want a shiny finish I want a dull finish I want to hunt with it I want it to look like it came out of the Hawkins shop in St. Louis in 1835 whatever so um, and I build mostly trapper guns the ones that got used up that there is no you know there's no replicas or, or there's no originals left around or very few of them so uh, this particular rifle where it's going um, it's gonna have it's gonna have more of a modern finish but it is gonna be a dull hunting type rifle so just a little bit snookered up I'm going to try to get out as many scratches as I can. There's a couple of dings in there that I'm going to work on. But I would rather leave a ding in the wood that looks like it might be a, 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 a user ding, you know. 
I'd rather leave that in the wood than sand it down and have a sand divot there. Uh, it'll either look like that's the way it came or it'll look like this rifle's been out in the woods with a trapper and it got a little scratch, you know. Um, so that's where I'm headed with this. Right now I've got it shaped pretty much exactly the way I want it. So I'm not going to use anything real heavy sandpaper wise. It's going to be 150, uh, probably the next one will be 220. And, uh, and then I won't go any coarser than that. Right now though, I've got it to the point where, as Teaspoon reminded me, it's lunchtime. Sometimes I get to working and I forget it's lunchtime. But as, now that I have Teaspoon, it's not as easy to forget. So what I'm going to do, since we're going to go have some lunch, is I'm going to rub some alcohol onto the wood. So it'll bring up the little grain spurs for us. By the time I'm done with lunch, it'll be dry. I like the alcohol instead of wood, uh, water. You can do it with water if you don't have any alcohol. It just takes longer to dry. The uh, alcohol dries up pretty good. So, yeah, just put a little bit on there. And, you know, just pour it on there. It isn't going to hurt wood one bit, so. But you do want it to raise as much of that grain as you can so you can knock it off with the finer grade. Uh, so, yep, it's coming out nice though. There we go. I've got another rifle on my other bench, so <laughs> I'm running out of benches. I gotta get this thing done and get this baby out of the shop. And get have some bench space to do the other ones that I got work I'm working on. Anyway, one thing to keep keep in keep on my channel for is uh, I'm working on getting an action so I can do a what's called a gemmer hawking. I'm going to do it in a uh, rolling block style if I can find a rolling block that I can afford to uh, experiment with. And uh, after Gemmer bought the Hawken shop in I don't know eight, in the 60s, 1860s, I think it was. Um, he started building the single shot, the single shot rifles were coming out and the Spencer was coming out and he would build a Hawken rifle with a uh, single shot rifle with uh, one of those actions in here and I'm going to do it in the rolling block uh, style if I find some a rolling block action. Uh, and that's going to be, that's going to be coming up once I get all the materials together so stay on the channel if that's something that interests you. I'm going to switch to my 220. And uh, knock all them birds off. Sometimes I do that twice. It just depends. Sometimes wood. Sometimes the wood works out to work. You don't have to. It just it doesn't flare up. It's got a little bit right now. So we're gonna run it and knock that down. And uh, usually, once I do that, then I can see a few more scratches that I need to work out. And I try to get as much of those out of them wood as I can before I put the first coat of stain on. But I'll be putting that stain on here in just a minute. As soon as I get this, all this rough stuff knocked off. And then I like to go down to 320 or 400. Um, grit before I start staining. I like it to be as smooth as I can and then that helps me see any more of those. Um, I don't see any more of those scratches in there that from the paper or file marks. Sometimes the file marks from shaping the stock. Um, those little file marks in there, you know, they're pretty deep. And it takes a while, and then of course when you're when I'm running this over here, I'm getting dust in there. So anyway, anyway, I'm gonna work this down a little more, and we'll see where it's going, and then we'll uh, maybe put some stain on. That's coat number one, and then it just goes from there. Just keep doing it over and over.
So grab your cup of coffee and uh, I'll work on this for a few more minutes okay, well, and you guys we'll be back to you in a minute. <clears throat> Having your coffee, I ran this down to 320. Boy, it's starting to be like silk. And before I forget, I'm going to get this channel. Because we're going to put some stain in there and some finish. And I want it to be just as smooth too. And then I like to try to take this sharp edge of where the curve comes into the channel, ramrod channel, the wiping stick channel. So this baby is really smoothed out. I, I've inspected it and I do not see any scratches. I do not expect there to not be any. <laughs> There's one spot here that's there's kind of a ding and it's too deep to it's too deep to dig out so I'm going to just it's right here I'm just going to leave it in there and it'll just be a, a deal for an accent I guess would be what you call it and uh, before we throw a Boy, it's a little cold. Before I throw a coat of stain on, I'm going to give it a real quick rub with this um, tack rag. These are great, man. They pick up everything. And it's really a good idea to... We're just going to take this wood and this dust off of here. And... Uh, I'm going to prepare a place over by the fire where I can hang this and uh, then I can work on uh, and uh, I can work on metal parts while it's Let's drying. see. On this particular one I'm using a American Walnut and uh, this is a Laurel Mountain Stain and like I say I'm not doing the traditional on this it's not what was requested so we're doing it this way. Uh, I gotta tell you, it leaves a, this stuff leaves a fantastic, phenomenal finish, so. And I'm kind of curious to see how my curl is going to come out on this piece of wood. It's been kind of hiding itself, so we're going to have to see. This is a dark stain. I really kind of like it. I like a dark stain on it. You know, some of them were done with a lighter. Um, geez, I don't remember what the name of it was, but it's kind of a lighter stain, more of a blonde stain, and, and they look okay too. And I guess if you're using dark, um, using dark furniture, it might be a good contrast. I don't know. This, uh, with brown furniture, with your uh, rust brown furniture, um, this stain gives you a really good uh, dark finish that's probably more of a good hunter's finish uh, as far as being not reflective and stuff like that. I like to get a little bit down in all the, all the inlets to get a little bit in there. I don't know if it makes much difference as far as protection but I think it looks better when the customer takes it apart. What I'm starting to see sometimes is you have people that want your handmade type gun but we're so used to these same people some of them and, and I'm not holding them against them or anything but these same folks are uh, expecting their handmade gun to look like that and it isn't gonna Okay, there's going to be rough spots in the inletting and places like that. Um, and I like to leave them like that because the guy that wants that handmade look, he wants that gun to be a little different and a little bit, uh, a little bit looks like it's been chiseled on by hand instead of a machine. 
Okay. Anyway, here's where we're going right now. It's got a little bit of curl here, and along here, and around here. And I haven't even wiped it yet, so it's doing really well. So it's going to be hard for me to do this and film, okay. so I'm going to get this done and I'll let you see it when it's... So this is going to have to go dry for a little while. As you can see, i got some curl here. This is a... It's got curl all the way out. It's a... Uh, this is a, a, a number three stock, a grade three. This one has all these lines in it um, that are just... I mean, it's just part of the tree, you know, it's... I was going to do a little bit of silver inlay in there, but because it has all these lines and these markings like this here, I decided to just leave it like it is and and not put that extra, that extra uh, decoration. It's going to look good. This is the first coat. We're going to hang it up. It's going to dry and... Uh, We'll give it another coat. We'll buff it down with some real fine sandpaper and give it another coat. That's going to dry oh, by the fire above the stove over there. It'll take a couple hours. Then I will uh, light sand it down. This is where I'll use 400 grit. And I'll light sand it down. If I find any scratches, I'll work them out. Um, if some of the scratches look decorative, I'll leave them in there because I think there were scratches in in the old uh, user rifles, uh, the ones that went out into the mountains. And uh, <clears throat> in between coats, I'll be working on my metal here, getting it all polished up. I got most of it done, but some of it still needs some, it's got some tool marks on it, got to be sanded out. And uh, I'll work on them and, and uh, stay with me. We're going to finish this out. Uh, I won't bore you with all the coats, but once I get past all this, uh, getting the stain and getting the texture and the stain where I want it and the, and the color that I want, we'll start rubbing in the oil and uh, I'll invite you on back. So stay with the channel and, and stick around. We're going to be fooling with this. I've got some other gun projects coming up that I have to get done. And uh, join me. Have a cup of coffee every morning with me and we'll work on guns together. Anyway, Buckskin Dave, I'll see you next time. Have a great day.